sorry, I'm, I think my screen is. Can, can you can you see my slide now? Yes, we can see you slide now. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Rafael. I'm a cloud engineer. I have about five years of experience working with Microsoft Azure and other solutions. So the reason why I like to talk about uh, virtual machines is because they are just like your computer. Okay, so I'm sure that you are attending this event uh, using a, a laptop or a desktop or uh, a mobile device. Okay, so uh, a virtual machine is just exactly like a computer. Everything that your computer can do for you, a virtual machine can do it for you. Okay, so now remember, remember that we used to, they used to say that the cloud the cloud, OK? The cloud is another person's computer. So assuming you find yourself, I don't know the city that you're staying in currently. So assuming that you find yourself uh, in another city and you get an emergency. OK, so I'm, I'm actually talking. Uh, this scenario I'm about to give to you is what happened to me. OK, so I traveled out of state to another state and I did not take my computer with me. I only took my phone. I, I only went with my phone because I wanted to go on a journey for two days. Then my boss all of a sudden called me that I have an emergency. Uh, there is a client that needs his environment to uh, be troubleshoot. So I didn't know what to do. So what I did, I looked for a computer shop. I looked for a computer shop around that city where I was. I, I paid for two hours to use their computer. I just logged into my my cloud environment. I created a virtual machine and I was able to, uh, I logged in, I was able to, using another person's computer, uh, I was able to log in and do what I want to do. So the question I'm going to ask you, if you, if you find yourself in a scenario where uh, you need, uh, your computer gets into, I mean, you find yourself in a situation where uh, your computer is broken down, okay? Your computer breaks down all of a sudden. Do you go and buy another computer or you log into the cloud? So to this, today, I'm gonna to be showing you in case you have that scenario, or you fall into that situation that happened to me, okay? How you can log in into uh, Azure portal, spin up a virtual machine and do some cool things with it. So we're gonna be doing a lot of cool stuff, okay? So uh let me proceed okay so um this lecture is actually on a level two uh because um but okay this part is on a level two but i think i'm gonna go back to level one okay um so we do level one first before we come back to this so uh, like i told you earlier on a virtual machine is just like a com computer a virtual machine can do for you anything that your computer will do so at this very particular time okay so let's assume that you are in um okay i stay in nigeria i stay in uh, uh i stay in abuja okay can someone in the chat tell me uh, a city in india can you write a city in india for me in the chat window i want this to be interactive so no one is talking so okay what I want, okay, Noida. So assuming you stay in Noida and another person stay, I, I, I need another, another person to type for me. I need another city. Okay, so yes, assuming someone stays in Tanzania and someone stays in Noida, okay? So now, um, you travel from New Delhi, okay? Assuming you travel from New Delhi to, uh, yes, that doesn't know, thank you. Assuming you travel from New Delhi to Bangladesh, you did not take your computer with you. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, uh, let's log in to Azure. Let's create a virtual machine. Let's connect to it before I come back to my slide. OK, so now my slide is saying that we should uh, create a, a data disk. OK, so uh, that's actually on on, a, on level two. So let's do the level one first. I'm going to create a virtual machine with you. I'm going to show you in case you have an issue, you fall into a problem, you did not take your computer, how to use uh, Microsoft's computer to do your work. So that's what we're going to do now. Is that okay? Thank you for, for typing the cities in the chat window. So let's head over to Azure portal. So I'm going to share uh, my Azure portal with you. Just give me a minute. I'm going to share my Azure portal with you. Just give me a minute, a minute. A minute, stop sharing. 
um, portal.org. So if you have a free trial account, okay, so what I'd like you to do is to type portal.azure.com, okay, and in the search bar, okay, so I'm going to, okay, so uh, let me, let me go to the beginning. Um, I'm going to close all these. Okay, so um, in case you're a little bit confused, all you just need to do to get a virtual machine, all you just need to do is to type in the search bar, virtual machine, okay? Type it in the search bar and it will come out. As you can see from my screen, uh, the best option is grayed out, okay? So you see that there are other options, but the best suggestion that relates to what I search for is in gray. So that would be uh, what I'm looking for. So this is it, virtual machines. I'm gonna click on it. So I want to create a, a Linux machine, okay? So let me just, it's its easy. Um, what I did, I logged in portal.azure.com. That's the first thing I did. Then the second thing I did was I searched, okay? I typed the name in the search bar and I clicked, okay? So now uh, you have create button. You have one here and one here. So you can use any, either of them is fine. I'm going to use this one. Okay, so when you click on that, you'll be greeted with some options. Okay, so the best one we need right now is this first one. Okay, so I'm going to click on it. So it, the first one is create a virtual machine hosted by Azure. Okay, so now the next thing you're going to do is to select your subscription. Now, let me tell you something about subscription. Okay, now uh, who can tell me? Uh, let's go back to the chat again. Who can tell me quickly? Who can tell me quickly? Um, if you need to rent an apartment, okay, assuming you 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 all have given me a lot of cities in the chat window, assuming you're moving from Kenya to New Delhi, the first thing you get to New Delhi, you need to rent an apartment. What do you need to get? Uh, what do you need uh, to, to get that your apartment? What is the first thing you need to get a new apartment? Assuming you move from Tanzania or Kenya to New Delhi, can, can someone tell me? Okay, in order, in order not to waste time, I'm going to say it, okay? So if you're moving to a new city, you need to get an apartment. Yes, exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam Adeyemi. You need to get your rent, okay? You need to pay your rent. So, the, so guys, 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 you need to pay your rent. So the, the same way, if you're going to use Azure, if you're going to use Azure, the first thing you need to get is a subscription. So what rent is to apartment is what a subscription is. To Azure. Okay, so yeah, you're getting a house, you're getting a new apartment, you pay rent, you come to Azure, you get a subscription. So now that's why you see on this screen, okay, there are subscriptions. The first thing I'm being greeted with is the subscription. You see that this one uh, this one has been disabled because uh my rent expired, okay? So but I have one that is active. Okay, so yes. So um, you see, I put a subscription, so subscription is yeah, I paid my rent, okay? So now the next thing you're gonna do, I wanna ask another question, okay? I wanna ask another question. Don't worry, I think we'll be able to cover all I need to cover uh, before the time runs out. I wanna ask another question. Now, I'm sure that you're watching this uh, broadcast from uh, an apartment, okay? Now, we am watching, we am presenting from, I have rooms, I have kitchen, I have bathrooms, I have living room, I have, I have a garage, I have a storage. Okay, so now I, I, I want to ask you something. Assuming I go to the market, I buy a stove, okay? Where do I keep it? Let's do this first. Okay, assuming I go to the market, I buy tomatoes. Where do I keep the tomatoes? Assuming I have room, I have a kitchen, I have, but yeah, good. Good, good, good. Yeah, so I put the tomatoes in the kitchen. Now, an another question, an another question, another question, guys, another question. Assuming I go and buy a uh, baking soap, where do I keep the baking soap? No, no, now we're talking about baking soap. Assuming I buy baking soap, where do I keep the baking soap? Yes, thank you, Uma. Bathroom, someone said bathroom, someone said, yeah, a lot of people are saying bathroom. Thank you very much. So as you will keep your tomatoes in the kitchen, okay, you'll keep your, uh, you need to keep your tomatoes in the kitchen. You keep your baking soap in the bathroom. That's how in Azure, everything has a place. Okay, so if you're creating a, a virtual machine, okay, you need to know where you want to keep 
that virtual machine. So that's what. So now let's look back. Uh, let's look back at the screen. Okay. So now. So that's why you need to create a resource group. You, so the same way you went to buy tomatoes, you kept them in the kitchen. You went to buy, uh, you went to buy baking soap. You kept it in the bathroom. You went, to, you bought a new TV. You kept it in the living room. That's how you need to uh, keep this thing that we're going to create right now in a resource group. So re that's whatever, whatever your bathroom is doing for you or whatever your kitchen is doing for you. That's what a resource group will do for, do for you. Now, let me get that. Let me get that clear to you as you will not go and buy tomatoes and keep it in the bathroom. OK, because tomatoes is meant for the kitchen. OK, you will not go and buy. Uh, you're not going to buy uh, a new a new a new TV and put it in the kitchen. Because TV is meant for the living room. OK, so that's how a resource group is. So you need to create a resource group to keep whatever thing that you're doing. So a resource group is a logical container that houses identical uh, items in Azure. OK, so now let me create one. OK, so I'm going to put this as a virtual machine uh, lecture. OK, so I've created a container. OK, so I've created a container. So everything I'm doing for this particular session, I'm going to keep it in this resource group. So I hope that uh, we are clear about. Uh, I hope that we are clear about what a subscription is and what a resource group is. So I'm just going to go uh, the next. The next session is asking for instance detail. Instance detail is just the name and other things. So for now, I'm just going to choose a name. Let me call it uh, VM uh, VM now. Okay, random, ran, random name. So I'm going to go with the default of everything that has been presented to me. I like to use USA, so I'm going to go with the default. Okay, so for password, I'm going to choose a username. Uh, for password, I'm going to choose my username as Azure user. Okay, Azure user. Password, I'm going to put pass. Word one two three star. Okay, so Microsoft likes using uh, password one two three star and Azure users. So that's why I'm using it because uh, you need to have uh, a, a consistent format that you will use for these things so that you don't forget. Okay, so password password one two three star. Okay, so it matches. So now, uh, as you can see, the first thing I was asked is the uh, project details, which include the subscription and the resource group, the instance detail, which just talks about the name of the virtual machine and the image I'm going to use. OK, and all that. So the image can be uh, Windows or Linux or whichever one. So uh, let me most people are using Windows computer. So let me change it to uh, Windows. OK, so Windows. OK, so guys, I'd like you to uh, get this very clear, OK? a virtual machine is just like a computer so i'm going to show that to you right now uh, that's why i i chose windows particularly so if i'm choosing windows i'm choosing an ad administrative account my username and my, my, my password so my inbound inbound port rules okay so for inbound port rules uh, if you choose windows meaning that uh, for the port rules you're going to choose rdp okay if you choose uh linux meaning that your rule is going to be ssh okay so uh okay everything is all right i'm just going to go to monitoring and disable diagnostics okay because i don't want uh i don't want to see logs and all that so i'm going to review and create So um, the reason why I'm doing this, I want you to know that I want you to know that um, the cloud provides resources. OK, so one of the quickest way to make you appreciate uh, digital transformation is the, the virtual machine, actually, because you can from wherever you are, just pin up a virtual machine and connect to it and do whatever you need to do. So I'm going to click on create. You see that validation has passed. I'm just going to click on create so that our virtual machine can be created. So um, this might take a little while, so we need to give it some time to uh, to create.
So as you can see that uh, it's not just cre it's creating every single thing that we need to uh, make sure that our machine is operational. So now, now remember one thing I'd like you to remember. OK, one thing I'd like you to remember is that. Uh, this this event that you are attending, your computer has storage because you probably store something. You probably stored a video on two in your computer. OK, uh, your computer has networking capabilities. That's why you are able to communicate with me. That's why you are able to watch me. OK, so networking has to do with IP and all that. OK, your your computer has storage, compute networking. So when when you deploy a virtual machine, every of those components are going to be deployed alongside with it. So uh, we, let's go to resource. So when you finish creating, just click on go to resource. So as you can see from the screen, uh, my status says running. I don't know if you guys can see clearly, but I'm going to increase my screen. You can see that uh, my virtual machine is running. So that means I created the virtual machine successfully. OK, so now the, the next thing I'm going to do uh, the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to connect to that virtual machine. OK, so let me click on connect. I'm going to connect to that virtual machine, so I'm, I'm going to click on connect. I'm going to use uh, RDP to connect. So remember, like I said earlier, if you're creating a Linux virtual machine, you use SSH. OK, so if you're creating a Windows virtual machine, so this one we created was a Windows virtual machine. So if you're creating a Windows virtual machine, you use uh, RDP. OK, so I'm going to click on RDP. Uh, I'm going to click on RDP so that we can connect to the virtual machine, guys. So it's not too difficult So watch and you see how to connect to your virtual machine. So uh, you can see that Microsoft has actually made it very, very easy for you. OK, so it, there's an IP address. There's a port. OK, it's asking me to download the RDP file. So I'm just going to click on download RDP file. OK. So as you can see, it's the RDP file has been downloaded. I'm just going to open it and click open. So easy, so easy to connect to a virtual machine, guys. So if you find yourself in a difficult situation and may, maybe you need to do a job, okay, and your RAM is so laggy, okay, your RAM is so laggy, may, maybe, okay, let, let me tell you this little story, okay. Um, uh, when I finished university, the first place that I worked was a game, a games company. OK, so now I don't know if you, you guys are aware that every game company, their most important assets is the ads. OK, the cartoons, the images and all that. Now, let me tell you, OK, if you have a 4 GB RAM computer, OK, if you want to create an image, it can that image when you want to render it with a 4 GB computer, it can take two weeks. OK, so no no company would want uh the designers okay the designers that are creating the critical assets which is the game arts to use the 4 gb computer so now um uh, if you stay in this part of the world nigeria uh and you decide to open a game company in 2022 or 2023 for example okay and you have 12 designers OK, and you cannot use 4 GB RAM for them. Definitely you're going to use 32 GB RAM. OK, so probably maybe you want to buy an Apple computer, 32 GB RAM. You're going to spend up to 1.8 to 2 million era. So just imagine you using, uh, let's say, probably about close to uh, 1,005 or there about or $1,700. OK, so for just for one computer that and that is not wise. So if me, I was the boss of that games company, what I would do Instead of going to spend that kind of money, I'll just, you know, I'll just create a cloud account for the company and anyone that wants to do anything, connect just, just the same way of connecting, do your work and submit. Okay, so you, you discover that, that that thing that they need to do with that size of, um, with that 4 GB RAM, okay? Now, we're going to be talking about sizes later on, okay? But uh, what I'm just trying to tell you is that you can create a virtual machine if your computer is giving you a headache. Okay. So if you're working in an organization that uh, where you are having these issues with uh, compute, compute issues, you just tell them that if you move to the cloud, uh, you can use a virtual machine for all this. Instead of spending so much 
all in job they just need to do is to increase the size of the virtual machine because now remember when we were creating the virtual machine we added um username and password that's why i told you that azure likes using uh, azure user okay so uh, that username and password is going to be useful here so i'm going to put it as your user okay so now password pass okay let me see i i type the password okay yeah it's wrong password one two three star so this is my password okay yes so we're connecting to the virtual machine now so easy so straightforward so the same way guys i don't know if you can see my screen i don't know if i'm sharing my screen but i'm i'm already uh, on a different interface I'm already on a different interface. Uh, let this load. I'm going to verify if you guys can see what I'm seeing. It's taking a while. It's taking a while. Um, okay, so, so while are you seeing that I've connected successfully to a virtual machine, the virtual machine that I've created. Okay, so I don't know if you guys are seeing my screen, but let me confirm. Um, Suraj? Uh, we can see your screen, but it's, uh, it's loading or something. Okay, uh, okay. It didn't come, come like Okay, hold on, hold uh, on. Completed I'm gonna, or the success. Yeah, I'm going to. Sh okay. So, ladies and gentlemen, I have successfully, I have successfully connected. Okay, hold on, hold on. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm sharing the screen of the virtual machine with you currently. So, I've successfully connected to the virtual machine. As you can see, it was not difficult at all. So, now, now, a uh, few points I'd like you to take note of every single thing that you have in your computer that computer that you're using to watch this event okay every single thing that you have in that your computer this one has it okay this one has it okay so let's say uh, uh now this is not my computer anymore this is that virtual machine so i click on the windows tab button you can see i have a browser okay so yeah let me open the browser if i don't it's i is is um yeah Okay, so this is a browser, uh, assuming that I want to Facebook. You can see that, yeah, assuming that I want to, uh, I want to Facebook using the virtual machine. Definitely I can. Okay, you can see that I can, I can go to Facebook. And now this is not my computer that we're looking at. This is the virtual machine. So I don't know if you guys are appreciating the beauty of what cloud computing can do for you. Okay, so yeah so this is this is the virtual machine this is not my computer okay so you send facebook not on my computer on the virtual machine so we can every single thing that you can do with your computer you can do with this virtual machine okay so um at uh, this very particular point now i'm going to return back to my slides so i've shown you how to create a virtual machine in azure and how to com com uh, how to connect to it and as you can see that we can do anything so assuming that you do not want to use uh uh windows uh, uh the yeah this is edge okay uh microsoft edge okay as the browser or internet explorer you want to you want to install mozilla chrome everything you can do so like i said earlier on every single thing that you can do on your computer you can do on this one so we have a lot to talk about today uh so as not to waste your time we're going to move on to the next thing because we're still going to come and use this virtual machine that i just spun up so let me go back to uh the slide and okay before i go you can see that we have everything so assuming that uh, even PowerShell, okay, assuming you need to work with PowerShell, just type PowerShell and it's going to come out. It's even PowerShell is here. So now this PowerShell is not the PowerShell of my computer. Okay, this is the PowerShell of the virtual machine. This is so cool, guys. 
This is so cool. Now, uh, the next thing we're going to do, so as not to waste time, I'm going to go back to the slide so that um, we'll discuss. Uh, yeah, let me go back to this. Let me share my, uh, let me share the slide with you. Let me share my screen so that you can see uh, where I stopped from. Okay, so let me stop sharing uh, the virtual machine. Let me share my slide. Give me a minute. Give me a minute. Sorry. Okay, so now we're back to level two. So that was level one. So now that I've taught you uh, the power of a virtual machine and what a virtual machine can do for you, so I can go on and talk about a uh, data disk. Now, guys, now your computer, the computer you're using to attend this event, okay, it has uh, what they call an operating system, okay, an operating system, okay. Um, so now the virtual machine that we created, whether you like it or not, I don't. I don't know if you remember. At a particular point, we we at a particular point we chose our operating system. So I had the option of choosing either Linux or Windows. So I chose Windows. Okay, I chose Windows. Now, when you create a virtual machine, it does not have what they call a data disk. Okay, so a data disk, what it has is a disk. Uh, is is a disk uh, where you can um, yeah. It's a disk for your operating system because he, he, so it does not have an operating system disk. So assuming that you created this virtual machine because you want to host an application on it, you have an issue. You need to create a data disk yourself. So the next part of this activity, I'm going to show you how to create a data. So we're going to be creating a data disk for that particular virtual machine that we just created. So now let me read from the slide. So we see. So when you create a virtual machine it will not have a separate space for managing your application data because yeah okay so it's your responsibility to create a data disk as, as a cloud administrator okay so let's go back to um let's go back to the portal and create our data disk so let me share my screen again so that you can see uh what i'm doing let me share my screen once more let me share my screen yes so, ladies and gentlemen, um, this is our virtual machine. Okay, this is a virtual machine. Now, rem rem remember, I was telling you uh, some few minutes ago. I made mention of the fact that, assuming that, assuming that you your your you have uh, you have a computer of um, a small size, okay, and you have a job. Maybe uh, you work in a games company, and they need to create. A new character. Maybe they need to create um, uh, a new character for a cartoon, and uh, it's gonna. You, your boss wants it to render very fast. Okay, your boss wants that cartoon in the next two hours. What are you gonna do? Uh, you're just gonna come to. Uh, you're just gonna come to here. The size. Okay. So you can change the the size, and okay. So you can change the size. OK, so uh, now you see that the cloud is so flexible. You have computers for general purpose. You have, you know, so whatever kind of work that you're doing, if it's memory intensive, if it's, you know, if it's memory intensive, if it's compute intensive, if it's storage intensive, whatever category of work that you're doing, you can come and choose the particular size that you want. OK, so I think because of the, the class of, uh, because of the kind of, uh, um the kind of uh what they call it the kind of subscription that i have i'm not able to change my size but assuming that this is a, a real company account you can come and change the size to suit what you want to do so you see that we have a different categories of sizes here so you can see that uh you see ram so let's look at ram you want to you want to use 32 gb ram all you just need to do is to select this one okay Select this one, text it. So instead of going to buy a new computer, so instead of going to buy a new computer, you can just create a virtual machine, uh, change the size to, yeah, 32 GB RAM, which is what I'm currently doing, okay? So the, the virtual machine, I just change the size to 32 GB, okay? So that uh, I want the cartoon that I'm making, the image that I'm making, to render uh, in the next, uh, probably in the next 30 minutes. I All I just need to do, Instead of using 4 GB RAM or 1 GB RAM, I just, you see that we have 3.5 GB RAM, 8 GB RAM, I just change it to 32. So instead of me spending one 
2.7 million naira to buy a new MacBook, okay, M2 chip that will run very fast. I decide, okay, I'm not buying MacBook for anyone. I create a virtual machine. I just, okay, create a virtual machine, uh, change the size to 32 GB, okay? Do what you want to do, and, and that's it, okay? So, guys, what I just did now, okay? What I just did, I changed the size of the virtual machine, okay, the RAM, okay? I changed the RAM, so it means that if I have that scenario that I've been given to you, and I have designers in my at my workplace, that, that I'm, it means that they'll be able to deliver that job for me in the next two hours, you know, instead of using two weeks to create, to render one image. So I hope that that is clear. So uh, that is that about site. So now the next activity, okay, the activity that we're onto is to create a data disk for our virtual machine. So how do you do that? How do you do that? You come by coming to click on disk, okay? So click on disk. So now, but you look at the screen very well. You can see that uh, there's really no uh, data disk. What, the only thing we have is operating system disk, okay? So that means that if we're doing anything, so uh, like if we're really creating this image, we're really creating uh, the cartoon with this virtual machine for, uh, for, for your boss. Your boss asks you to create uh, a cartoon image, okay? There is no way for you to store that cartoon image, okay? Because your 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 virtual machine does not have a disk and that's not good so how 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 are you going to create that disk all you just need to do is just to scroll down look at os disk data disk click on create okay so we're going to click on create okay so we can give it a name uh let's say uh the project is to make a uh, cartoon okay no um uh cartoon character okay so cartoon uh cartoon how do they spell cartoon again cartoon character okay so cartoon underscore character okay so that's gonna be that's the name of the project so let's call it disk that okay so uh you see that we have different classes of disk okay um these are all attached to your as your story so as your story is another topic entirely uh if we can talk about it from you know during any other event so yeah so we can just go with the default premium ssd so it said premium ssd is the best for production and performance sensitive lock workload so i'll just go with the default now okay remember uh, i talked i talked about the fact that the the better the uh the better the ram okay the faster the uh you know the faster the image and all that but this is data disk this is just to store okay so ram will be better for probably for uh you know for the main uh operating for the os disk okay so for this is just storage so but storage i think 4 gb is too small so we can just choose 20 for this project so let's say 20 okay so we have 20 uh we can see that yeah so we can just click on save to save it, so it's creating the disk. So as as we so interesting, right from the this this. Okay, so I'm gonna. I don't I don't want to digress away from uh, what we're talking about, but you see that there are so many other things that we can do on this side as well. But let me finish with this particular disk. So we've seen that. Uh, it, it has been updated so we have um we have the details updated on this side but that is not all so we still need to go back to the virtual machine uh that we ssa that we already paid into so i'm still going to let me share my screen so we go back to that uh virtual machine so that we understand more okay so someone asked a question uh what is the importance of data disk so guys uh now your data disk is where you're going to store whatever you're doing okay so it means that if you don't have a data disk you you don't just create a virtual machine for the sake of creating a virtual machine you want to create a virtual machine because you want to use it for something so now remember uh when i uh first showed you that virtual machine i opened facebook right so now everything assuming that i'm going to use it for only facebook so everything i'm going to be doing on facebook needs a place to be stored so that data disk is where everything i'm doing is going to be stored but typically uh typically uh it's used for uh it's used for uh yeah 
application. So you will create a virtual machine because you want to host your application on it. So I hope that I answered your question. So let me go and share my screen so that I'll show you, uh, so, that, so that we complete the uh, data dig stuff that we're doing. So I'm going to show you, I might need to RDP into that machine again. I think I lost connection. Okay, so I lost connection. I'm not seeing it on the list. Um, need to, I need to connect to it again. So give me a minute, uh, we'll come to that. Okay, give me a minute. Uh, I need to share my screen. Okay, so guys, another thing I need you to do, I need to, uh, let me share my Azure portal with you first before I continue. I need you to understand the fact that you need to, uh, your IP is, is dynamic. Okay, your IP is dynamic, meaning that the IP is changing. So you need to extend the default time to increase the time or, or else you'll be kicked out. Okay, so let's go and work on the IP before we continue. So let me share my Azure portal with you as we change the IP. So now uh, go to the overview page. Okay, go to the overview page. Okay, so from, from the overview page, you see that you see IP address. Click on IP address. Click on IP address. So um, you see that idle timeout is just four minutes. So you need to increase that so that whatever you're doing, uh, you don't get kicked out. Okay, so we've increased it to 30 minutes. Okay, so because we don't want to get kicked out. Uh, we don't want, we don't, we do not want the IP uh we do not want the virtual machine, the IP address to be timed out after four minutes. So we have 30 minutes. So if you need to do anything, always make sure that uh, your IP is not uh, dynamic, your IP is static, okay? So so Microsoft knows that, oh, this guy created a virtual machine and he is reserving this IP for 30 minutes. So we're not gonna disturb him. So with that, so uh, the reason I'm saying this is, uh, I've been kicked out of the, uh, the virtual machine because I didn't do this. So if I'd done this at the beginning, uh, we'll still be able to, we would have still be able to connect to it easily. So let me go back and connect to the virtual machine. So to connect to your virtual machine, all you need to do is to click on this button, click on RDP. Uh, we've downloaded it before. Okay, so if you want me to download it again, I can download it again, but I've downloaded it before. I'm just going to click on what I downloaded earlier. I don't know if you can see that on my screen. The is asking for username and password. Okay, so yeah, password pass. Word one two three star. Okay, so password one two three star. Yes. So I'm about to connect again. Okay, so it's trying to connect, but I need to get um, I need to get something. Okay, no, so let's see. What am I showing you? I'm showing you. Let me let me confirm what you guys are seeing. Um, are you guys seeing the virtual machine that I created? that I just RDP'd into shit. Sorry, sorry guys, I'm not supposed to say that word. Okay, so what you need to do now, uh, I, let me confirm if you guys can really see. Ho hold on, I need to go and check that uh, Teams. Oh, can someone speak and confirm with me if you guys are seeing the virtual machine? Um. Okay, wait. No, me. Uh, we are not seeing the virtual machine. Okay, so I need to share properly so that you guys can see it. Um, because the next few minutes we're gonna be initializing the disks that we created on the portal. So where is the virtual machine? Okay, yeah, here. Okay, so here you, you, okay, you guys are seeing it now. So uh, remember that we went to Azure portal. Uh, we clicked on disk. Okay, we had an operation, op operating system disk. Now we created a data disk. So that data disk 
is not usable at this moment okay it's not usable at this moment we need to make it usable so we're gonna we're gonna click we're gonna on the side bar, remember this virtual machine is just like your computer so on the search bar we're gonna type disk management okay just type disk um disk management let's see what is gonna come out okay so yeah so I have not finished typing this management. It showed this. So we need to click on that panel and locate that that disk that we created in Azure portal and initialize it to make it usable. So it's not usable yet. You cannot use it yet, though you created it, but you've not finished the process yet. OK, so I uh, think my computer is hanging. It is showing it, but it's in the background. Let me see if I can drag it out. Uh, just give me a few minutes. And OK, so computer is hanging. Uh, OK, showing it now. Oh, sh sorry. This management. Was it? Uh, yeah, so. So guys. We created a disk, OK, so we cannot use it yet. OK, but you, you can see that it there's something that popped up on the screen when I Click on this. Say you must initialize a disk before Logical Disk Manager can access it. So we created it. We've not initialized it. So we need to initialize it. Okay. So which of the following styles are we using? Okay. Either uh, GPT or MBR. So I'm going to just choose the default, which is MBR. So now, uh, so I'm just going to click OK. So I hope that you all are seeing my my screen and the very fact that. The thing is telling us we must initialize that disk before we can do anything. So I'm going to click OK. OK, so I've clicked on OK. I'm going to scroll down to locate the disk. OK, so this is it. So remember it was, I think I typed 20 GB. So which is, uh, it's 19.99 is here. So which is, which is still uh, close to what we want. So now what you need to do is to right click. Now if I right click on the first one, it's not going to show me what I want because that's not what we created. The what we created was disk two. So this one is probably the um, the OS disk. So let me uh, right click on disk two. You see, see right, when I click on disk two, it it gives that uh, new simple volume uh, wizard out. So I'm not going to click on it first. Let me show you do the same thing on this one. You see that it does not show me that uh, format of new uh, new volume. So let's focus on Dix2. So new simple volume. Just click on new simple volume. You see that it brings out um, it brings out a, a this wizard out to help you uh, simplify the process of initialization and formatting these guys. If you want to if you want to use a new disk, okay, even with common sense, the new, the first thing to do with it is to uh, to format it. So this uh, this uh, volume wizard will help you do all the all the initialization and formatting. So we're just going to click on next. OK, so. OK, we'll click on next. OK, so we're just going to uh, choose the default alphabet. It gave us it gave us E. OK, click on next. So you can give it a label as uh, let's say um, data. Uh, okay, we call the other one cartoon, cartoon uh, character, cartoon underscore character disk, cartoon character. So you can see that we are we are moving. Okay, so so the operation you can see that with the disk is now uh, ready for use. Okay. So the disk is now ready for use. So we have successfully created a data disk for a virtual machine. So I hope that you're clear. I hope that you understand. I hope that you know um, what uh, you can do with uh, how you can create a data disk for your uh, operating system. OK, so let me go back to Azure portal so that we can continue the rest of the lecture. Uh, OK, so let, let me answer your question. What are you confused about? Please share. The following out the way it requires to enter 
username and password. So I'm going to take it slow. I'm not going to rush. Uh, let me clear your confusions. So uh, Maiza wants me to share the RODP file. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is to go back to the overview page and show you how the RODP file gets connected. So don't worry. I'm going to clear your confusions, guys. Don't worry. Step by step. OK, so I'm going to answer the first person first, which is Maiza. OK, if I'm right, I'm going to share my screen. I'm gonna so I'm gonna do that by going to the overview page. So this is the overview page. Okay, let's go back to okay. So this is the main page, the overview page of the virtual machine. Okay, you talked about RODP file. So to get the RODP file, first thing you're gonna do is to click on connect. Okay, so I'm gonna click on RDP. Okay, so um you okay for so that you I clear your doubts, I'm gonna download it again. OK, so I'm, I'm I'm hoping that you're seeing you seeing that it's downloaded. So I'm going to open it. OK, I'm going to open it. Uh, when I click open, it says I should connect. OK, so when I click connect. Uh, it asking me for my username and password. So now remember this username and password. I got them when I created the virtual machine. Uh, if you're still confused, I'm going to open in on another tab. Uh, if we're going to pretend that we're creating a new virtual machine so that you see how we got those details, the last username and password. Just give me a few minutes or I'm going to clear it out. Don't worry, uh, the other guy that says he's confused, I'm going to clear that as well. So I'm going to click on virtual machine. OK, so I want to show you how we got the username and that password. Um, OK, so remember I talked about rents. If you if you're renting a new house, you need to pay your subscription. Yes, your your in as your your rent is your subscription. So I have a subscription that's running uh, now. Remember, I talked about if you go buy something, you need to put it in a place, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, so I. Created a resource group, so your 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 resource group holds identical items together. Remember your kitchen holds all kitchen things, your bathroom holds all, all bathroom things. So now I want this resource group to hold everything I'm going to create for this session. That's why I created this resource group as well, virtual machine lecture, okay? So now that's not the case anyways. Instant details, the name of the virtual machine, okay? So, uh, so it was from this instance detail, we chose if we wanted to use, um, uh, it was from this instance detail uh, we chose if we wanted to use uh, a Linux or a Windows. OK, so uh, I we, uh, we decided to choose uh, a Windows. OK, so we did to choose Windows. We chose Windows. That was why we are having a Windows virtual machine. We chose Windows. OK, so if we are choosing Linux, we will have a Linux virtual machine. So we decided to work with Windows. OK, so that's why we have that. OK, so now I hope that you're, you're clear. But for uh, the person that asks about uh, username and password, I just want to clear out how we got that. OK, so for authentication type, I decided to choose password. OK, so now we, when I choose password, meaning I'm going to fill the space for username and password. OK, so Microsoft likes using Azure user. So, they, so I'm, that's why I typed Azure. Um, as your user okay the password is pass for one two three start that's what microsoft likes using as well for lectures so uh pass word one two three start so um, i hope that i'm clear i've been able to clear it out so is this same password and username that we created at this point that we needed to enter uh in our rdp file okay so yes so I hope that you are clear now. So as per the username and the password, how we got here. Okay, so that same username and password that you got at the beginning when you were creating the virtual machine, that's what you are entering uh, when you're going to connect to the virtual machine. So the password here is pass word one, two, three, start. Okay, so yeah, voila, it's going to connect. This, this is showing you that it's going to connect. So I, I think I've cleared the doubt of the very, a first person, okay. Uh, I've cleared the doubt of the first person. So let me look at other other issues. I, I need an elucidation on what virtual machine is. So uh, um, 
Abdul, Abdul Razak, a virtual machine is just like your computer. Virtual machine is like a computer. Okay, so uh, you, 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 okay, I, I gave you, I gave you a lot of scenarios, okay. Uh, why would a company want to use a virtual machine? Why would you want to use a virtual machine? Assuming you have a job, okay, you have a job, uh, the job is requiring you to do something that is heavy, okay. Okay. Uh, is requiring it's requiring it's, sorry is requiring you to do something that is heavy and that thing needs uh, it needs um that thing that the, the that you want to do needs a ram of 30 gb okay and now i just give you a scenario uh where uh, a ram of 30 gb currently as we speak in this location where i am okay nigeria okay uh, if you want to buy that kind of computer with that kind of ram you're going to spend up to 1.7 million era so if you do not want to spend that kind of money okay what you will do is to spin up a virtual machine okay that's one scenario where a virtual machine will become useful okay so now the one i created i ssh i you know i arrow dip it into it and you saw that i opened the browser at facebook so um uh, in 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 the long in, to cut the long story short to cut the long story short okay to call the long story short you can do everything that you're doing on your computer in a virtual machine okay i hope that i've been able to answer your question now um uh, where do i get uh, an iso image to install uh, uh okay so hold on i'm going to answer your question uh, but let me answer other people's on first um the IP is the IP address for the network on the computer. So the IP address is for the virtual machine. OK, so when you create a virtual machine, you, it's going to give you everything. OK, everything that you need to. Yeah, it's going to give you everything, but that IP address, you need to make sure since you're connecting to it, you need to make sure that you change the default time from four, mi four, four minutes to 30 so that it can allow you to do everything that you need to do so that, yeah. I think I've shared my screen. Uh, I've shared my screen when I was RDP. I've explained that clearly. Um, I got lost where you shared the RDP. I think I have I've explained that as well. OK, I've explained that. Uh, OK, so the implication when the IP address is not dynamic, when what? OK, the IP address does not need to be dynamic. It needs to be static. OK, if it's dynamic, meaning it will change. OK, so if you make it static for 30 minutes, meaning that all throughout that period you're using, you're not going to be disconnected. So I hope that that is clear. Uh, can I assess my CD-ROM on my VM? Um, you know what a CD-ROM is. You obviously you cannot. OK, you cannot, but there are no. No, OK, there's another concept. No, 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 nah, no. I don't think there's anything like that. So what you have is OS data disk and, and most of those things you can actually. OK, so the, it, like I told you earlier, it takes another concept. It, it takes us back to another concept, cloud storage. So if I'm able to come back for another session, I'll talk, talk about that with you. So let me check any other question. Can you open file manager so that we can see the drive from my computer? OK, so you want to see file manager. This is OK. I think I'm. OK, so the, who said is confused? Can I install any software on game? Yes, you can install any software on game. Abdul Karim, I hope Abdul Razak, I hope I've been able to clear your doubts because I went back to the portal. I tried to simulate the creation of another virtual machine. I hope I've cleared your doubts. Non Halan, non Halan la. Have I cleared your doubt or you have a specific question you can ask? I'll answer it. OK, so how, how can I is, is oh yes, um, if you want to integrate. OK, let, let me show you another thing. I think uh, let me answer. Let me answer uh, JIT. OK, so if you want to integrate any other thing, guys, Azure is so interesting. The concept of a cloud computing is so interesting. Yes, I'm. I'm going to share. I'm going to go back to the virtual machine that we created. You see that you can you can integrate anything that you want to integrate. Just just give me a, a minute or two. Uh, let me share uh, the overview page of the virtual machine so that you see. Okay, so no, not this, not this. Um, let me go back to home. Okay, so no, yeah, this. So the overview page. 
Okay, so if you want to have custom integrations, you want to apply anything, okay, what you need to do is to click on extensions, okay? Man, guys, this is this is so cool, okay? Click on extensions, okay? So I'm trying to answer someone's question. Someone typed in the, in the chat window if you need to install integrations. So if you want to install integrations, all you need to do is to come to uh, extension, click on add, okay? Click on add. And you can see that you can install uh you can install anything that you want to install okay so uh the, the, i believe that there is space for custom integration as well you can install custom integration but you can see that if you want to uh, install any other thing on your virtual machine is very very possible so assuming that we want to install these um uh for example let's say uh performance diagnostics for example okay so you want to know uh what is happening or how yeah you can do that I, I don't want to do it i just want to show you that it's possible to install anything okay uh i answered someone's question so so it's possible to install anything on your virtual machine okay, so let me see uh, if i can answer another person's question uh, okay, so uh, actually we we were supposed to do some we were supposed to talk about some other things, uh, um, uh, skill set and some other things, but uh, it's just that we won't have enough time. Okay, so uh, but let me answer a few questions. Hello, sir. I saw why creating this. You left the option as read only. Okay, so now yes, it's possible. That was just an example. Uh, it's possible to change it to read or write there is option for read or write so it's possible to change that uh robinson bearer yes it's possible to change it from read only to read write it's possible but i just that was the first option that came i just went with the default how can i assign a public i public domain to a computer okay so uh you actually can create an ip address separately and connect it how to connect uh with ssh so now guys i need you to understand something i do not need you to be confused uh, ssh is if we're creating a linux virtual machine so assuming that assuming that what i chose was a uh, linux okay we will then would we'll, we'll ssh okay but since since this was uh since this was um since since this was windows that was why we use rdp OK, so if I'm able to come back any other time, we'll do some other fun things. So um, can I use Mac? Yes, you can. You, you can do the same thing we have. We have done if you are using a, a, um, a Mac. Can a virtual IP address be assessed VPN strict? Uh, OK, so now uh, for Collins Omondu, uh, your question, uh, there is a networking section. OK, so you can configure. You can see networking, I still have it. You can configure um, extra layers of security for your virtual machine. How you want it to be, uh, it's all up to you, okay? You want it to, you can configure, you can restrict access, you can deny access, uh, you can do anything. So you want your, uh, your question you're asking probably is because you want your, uh, you want your 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 virtual machine to be safer. You don't want any connection to come in. You can do that by clicking on the networking section of the virtual machine and config. You can configure anything that you want to configure. You can see here you have inbound, outbound, uh, application security group, and load balancing. Okay. Now uh, there's a very very interesting concept uh, about. So assuming that you host, there's one last thing I want to, I think our time is almost up. We only have two more minutes, but there's something I want to talk about. Um, uh, there's something. Do you install a software as an extension? So assuming that you have some custom scripts that you want, yes, you, you can add them as, a, as an extension. But there's one last thing that I want to uh, share with you before our time is gone. Um, I want to use a real life example, OK? Um, I'm, I'm currently uh delivering this lecture from nigeria okay so there's this particular company called jc penny okay so i'm going to type jc penny on my computer you see i think this is related to okay so can you all see my screen can you just see what just happened can you all see what is happening what i'm seeing on my screen 
Uh, let me see if you guys. Yeah, I hope that you guys are seeing it. So Jesse Penn is telling me that uh, I'm, I'm, they are not able to provide uh, shopping experience to people in this country. How are they? So assuming that you host uh, the workload of that Jesse Penny on your virtual machine, okay, and you do not want people from this uh, this country, this part of the world, to do it. Uh, I think I'm, I'm actually answering somebody's question. Okay, you don't want people. Uh, from this part of the world to 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 uh, to do it, what you gonna uh, what you gonna work with is that the networking section of your virtual machine. So you could you can from the networking section you can configure uh, you can configure you can do anything that you want to do to restrict access to the workload. Okay, so you want to restrict access. You don't want people to access what what whatever the app. So guys, remember, we're creating a virtual machine because you, you probably want to host an application in that virtual machine, okay? You want to host an application there. So, and that application that you hosted, you don't want people to, uh, you know, to assess it. You you can configure everything from that place. I think we have, um, uh, yeah, okay, so uh, we have exhausted the time, okay? So, uh, can you explain deployment and on-premise? Okay, so um, before I go, um, before I go, let me talk about let me talk about on premise. When you talk about on premise, meaning that when you say on premise, meaning that whatever you're doing, it's in your own private facility. Okay, it's not in the cloud. You probably bought a land, a piece of land. Okay, you you built a, a building. You bought servers and rack. Okay, you bought servers and rack, and you kept them in that place. So you want to simulate the experience of a cloud in your own data center. You want to do things that a cloud uh, a cloud can do in your own data center. That's why you'll have, uh, I'm actually talking about the concept of private cloud. Guys, thank you very much. I think uh, I've exhausted my time. Uh, I'm going to hand the session back to Suraj. I hope to see you uh, next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael, for the session. If you have five minutes, if there is any questions that uh, if you have five more minutes, then we can answer it if it's OK with five minutes. OK, I want to answer uh, Steven's question. OK, so there is another there's going to be another session for uh, the con container orchestration is something different entirely. So let me let me prick your mind a little bit. So now um, the world has changed, guys. The world has really, really changed. This is 2023. Uh, uh, before now, you used to have applications where uh, one single application uh, one single application, everything stays in one place. But in 2023, you have the concept of uh, containers. Containers meaning that, uh, assuming this phone, okay, each part, each part is independent of themselves, okay? Each part works on its own, meaning that if my screen gets poor, it does not affect uh, any other thing. Uh, each part can work on their own, okay, to uh, form one unit. I think that I might not be able to explain the whole concept of containers uh, in five minutes, but uh, Azure has uh, their own way of doing co con container orchestration. So Suraj, maybe maybe in the next two weeks, uh, come and speak separately on container orchestration. And um, uh, Stephen Mungai, I hope that you're going to attend in the next two weeks uh, because I'm going to offer to speak on container orchestration. I'm going to talk about Azure Kubernetes and Kubernetes. So we're going to create some Docker files and Docker images and you know host them to the cloud so that you understand uh, how containers work in Azure. Yes? So um, does the creation of a VM depend on the choice of? OK, so I like the question of Musa Dan Hamidu. OK, uh, I like that question that you just asked. OK, so you are able to uh, we're able to do all these manipulations that we did uh, because we're able to do all these manipulations that we did because a virtual machine falls under the category of infrastructure as service. Yeah. Inf infrastructure as a service. So infrastructure as a service is only that the only option that gives you that flexibility to change uh, to change configure and do things the way we've just done. OK, platform as a service is not giving you that option. OK, platform as a service says bring your code as a developer and come and use our platform. We will be responsible for every other thing. Software as a service 
uh, the, this, the code is no, the, the app is already ready for you to use. You just log in. So, um, yeah, I hope that I'm, <laughs> I hope that I'm clear. Oh, so, Raj, I'm going to go off now. Thank you. Uh, see you next time. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thank you, Rafael. Thank you for the extra time. And uh, we can certainly have another session as well. So, yeah, thank you. And uh, please make sure you fill that attendance form which I have shared in the chat box uh, before you leave the session. And uh, please do join the community for upcoming sessions that we're doing, certification training that we are doing. So um, I recommend you to be joining in the community for getting updated about the upcoming events. And thank you all for joining today's session with us and uh, looking forward to having you guys in the upcoming sessions as well. And uh, Thank you. If you have any questions related to event, you can uh, drop it in the chat box. I'll be happy to respond. <laughs>